and where it deserves. Many men could not be bothered to fulfill the conjugal rights of their own spouses because they do it in haram or sometimes they don't realize. The Prophet says, Fi ahadikum sadaqatan. When you fulfill the intimate rights of your spouse, it is a sadaqah, it is an act of worship, it is a charity. The Sahaba was surprised. They listening, they said, Me, have sex with my wife, and it's an act of worship. Whoa. So they said, How? Oh, Messenger, how is that? You know what he said? Do you see if this person fulfilled his desires in a haram way, would he get a sin? They said, yes, he would. Well, if he fulfilled it in the right way, he would get a reward. Subhanallah. Many people say, you know, when a man calls his wife, she's supposed to respond. You know, Subhanallah. What about the wife's needs? Many men don't even want to talk about that. You've left her alone. She's remaining this way as though she's a widow. Subhanallah. And she's not. She has a husband. He's not really interested. He's not keen. She'll touch you at night and so on. What do you do? Hey, I'm tired. Trying to sleep. Don't you see? What time I came? What time do I go? And you say, what did I say? I didn't say anything. May Allah forgive us. The only reason I'm speaking bluntly and directly is because my beloved messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has spoken in the same blunt and direct way. Otherwise, I would be ashamed of speaking and saying things. He spoke about it live, open, clear, no hiding because he, Allah knows this problem was there and it's going to come. Where men sometimes think that's it, it's me. I'm only worried about me, me, me and me, you know, no way, not at all. It is about us. It is about a family unit. A family unit is made up by more than one person. Otherwise, it's not called a family unit. A marriage is made up by more than one person. Otherwise, it's not called a marriage. You can't say I'm a married man when you don't have someone who called a wife. You can't say you're married. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us strength. So my brothers and sisters, it's important for us to know to give people their independence. When you're married, sometimes people think, and I know the in-laws sometimes feel this in some cultures. Like I said, I'm not totally aware of the culture here, but I know in a lot of the places in the world, a woman gets married and the mother-in-law thinks that, okay, I can now fire the maid I used to pay because now I've got a maid whom I don't need to pay. If that's the case, you have failed. No woman would actually say no to doing some of the household chores if she is appreciated correctly. Am I right, sisters? You heard that. They don't mind. They will cook for you. They will do for you and so on. They will say a lot. But at the same time, they will say as much. I'm mean, sorry, they will do a lot. They want you to appreciate it. That's all. You just need to say, wow, you must have been working from the morning to the evening. Don't worry. The weekend, we'll, we'll go out to eat. I'm not encouraging going out to eat, by the way. But I'm giving an example. You can bring her something. Bring a little gift. We take gifts for everyone here and then what about your spouse? What have you done? Have you ever brought her a gift or him? Have you ever decided sometimes, subhanallah? You know, I remember, and I'm going to tell you this, it's my own life, okay? So I'm not doing riba of someone or saying something of someone. One day I was leaving to travel on a journey. And I remember as I was going, there were some visitors. Now normally you greet your spouse and you go as though you're never going to come back. Because every time you leave the home, it could be the last time. They may never see you again. So whenever you leave loved ones, make sure you utter beautiful words to them because it could be the last time that you're ever seeing them, right? So I saw my wife was busy and I'm thinking to myself, what should I do now? You know, she's there with the visitors. I can't go in. These are ladies sitting and saying, love you, man, love you, love you. And so, you know, some of us, it's still a little bit taboo to do it in public because, you know, I always believe when people show too much of love in public, I don't think they get along inside their doors, you know. It's just a show, you know. It's like the boxers who hold hands in public and they want to go, ah, they want to box each other, you know. They were just holding hands before the fight. But those who really love each other, it's more than words. It's more than, it's actually something you feel is there. 
That does not mean do not say the words. Nowadays, if you have not said I love you, I adore you, I miss you and so on 20 times a day to your spouse, the new generation, they'll think you don't love them, no matter what. Did you hear what I said? Write it down, please. <laughs> Sending messages. We are professionals. We are on our phones all the time. You know, I read an article this morning saying, one man was saying, I used to wonder what Allah means when he says, you need to sit with total concentration in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or ponder over the verses of Allah with total concentration until I saw people sitting with the mobile phone. Now I know what it means. They talk to you, you can't hear them. Hello? Mm. How are you? Yeah. Everything is okay? Yeah. Are you stupid? Yeah. And so on. They don't even know what's happening around them. They're not concentrating. It's only on the phone. And we're sending messages. The heart. You know, I've spoken about it in the past. WhatsApp has done you a favor. It actually starts pumping. Before it wasn't even pumping. And we're sending those hearts every day. Kisses and hearts and blushing faces and love yous and everything else. Subhanallah. But to the wrong number. Wrong number. May Allah forgive us. Send it to the right number and your wife will be shocked. Your husband will be, are you sure? Are you sure it's the right person? <laughs> wow. Amazing. This is how you build your home. You need to show this relationship. Work on it without working hard on a relationship. It's not going to just happen. No more. There is a lot of pressure out there from various angles to break your home. You need to work on it. Work hard. Another thing is trust. Learn to trust one another. But it's not good enough to say, trust me, trust me. Do not give reason to your spouse to be mistrusted. That's also important. We always talk about trust. The men say, talk to the women, tell them they need to trust us. And I say, but men, I think those who know my style of answering, I normally, but listen guys, why do you give them reason to mistrust you? Why? So let's get back to my story. So I saw these people sitting there, right? And I decided, let me take a paper and write on a note. I love you. I miss you. I'm leaving. I'll call you later today, etc. Tore it and I put it under her pillow. And I went away. I was gone. There was no other way of doing things. You won't believe it. You won't believe it. She sends me a message later, talking of my own family. And she tells me, that was the best thing that have, has happened in a long time. For me, it didn't really. I just did it because of the circumstance. Note, subhanallah. I meant it. I, I, it's not like I didn't mean it. But, <laughs> subhanallah. But, what I mean is something I probably re thought was this. I didn't realize the impact it would have in my own handwriting with a little squiggle at the back looking like a signature, meaning at the bottom. And I just said two or three sentences and the impact it had. And when I went home, I saw the paper and now that was, you know, it was the center of a romantic relationship, you know. So I took the paper and I squashed it thinking I'll throw it in the bin and, you know, hey, leave it, leave it. I said like, what? It became an artifact of history, I promise you. I think it can be put up to show to the generations, you know, Dad, that's what he wrote for Mom. Wow. Anyway, we ended up disposing of it because I said, no, if I leave it there, I might not write it again. If I don't, I'll end up writing it more and more and more. Subhanallah. You know, men always get their way somehow. I don't know. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. But the reality, the reason I mention this is because what we take for granted, our spouses might never have thought it would come from us. We take it for granted. Work on your marriages. I promise you, you can. And there is another problem that we have. You marry a model, subhanallah. She cannot remain a model forever, subhanallah. She will not. She has to become a mother at some stage. You have to appreciate. You have to say, people say, ah, you are now too fat. And then in some countries, ah, you are too thin. I mean, what's going on? They say, not enough meat. And some people say, too much meat. Now, wh what's going on? Make up your minds, guys. What do you want? May Allah forgive us once again. The same applies to the women. I think women are more tolerant. But sometimes, yesterday there was a young man who complained. He wrote a, a question to me. And it was in the form of an instruction. Please tell the women not to be demanding. 
I said, well, you are telling me what to tell them. What's the point of bringing me here? They should have left me in Zimbabwe. They should have called you up and said, please tell them what you want to say. Subhanallah. Then I told him, I actually get up because I like to look at both sides of the coin. It takes two to tangle. So I said, listen, if you want to get married, you need to be able to afford your spouse. I'm not saying that you need to be wealthy or something, but you, you cannot use me to put your, to rest your gun on my shoulder to shoot someone. No. And when they look at where the bullets coming from, they see me standing there. A lot of people do that. Did you hear what Mufti Meng said? Ah, so you're using me to shoot down someone else. Audhu Billah. Stop it. That's not healthy for your relationship. Don't do that. You need to understand there are two sides of the coin. Just because you are miserly, you spend money on women, on wine, on children and so on. Meaning on, on children that are not yours. The children of your girlfriend, Audhu Billah. It's happening. And your own kids, they are dying, starving. They look at you even for a chocolate. Wallahi, I want to show you something. I'm showing it to you just for the sake of Allah. Look, my pocket is here. When I got out of the hotel, I took with me three small boxes of chocolate. Here they are. Two are here. Why did I do this? I said to myself, you know, I'll meet a lot of people. If I meet little children, I'll give them something. They'll probably remember me with this. And you know what? It might touch their lives forever. I got a chocolate. Here it is. Yesterday, I had a few sweets. I, held, I put them in my pocket to give people. Wallahi, every time I give someone something, I think to myself, when I go home, I'm going to make sure I take for my child as well. My own child. When I give someone something, and I've given gifts to many people, I always tell myself that, Ya Allah, help me to treat my family in an even better way. Because the hadith says about charities, that when you want to be charitable, start at home. It's an English saying as well, charity begins at home. It doesn't say charity begins at your girlfriend's home. No. It doesn't say that. Your home. Wallahi, there are people suffering in silence because they are ignored. So when you are selfish and you don't do things, you don't think things, you need to think and do and apply, etc. When you don't do that and you don't and you don't think up ways of developing your relationship, and then you want to come and as miserly as you are, use an excuse to say, you know what, don't be demanding. I didn't demand anything. It's expected of you. It's expected of you. This appreciation, someone cooks, and you know the toast is burnt. The toast is burnt, for example. That's the only time you ever notice. But for the 10 years that the toast was fine, it was just, come here. Why is there no butter here? Where's the jam? Where's this? Where's that? Where's the honey? Etc. And she looks at you and says, I'm here. I don't mean you, I mean the real honey. Aren't I the real honey? May Allah forgive us. My brothers and sisters, rather than that, when the toast is burnt, and I said this yesterday, I'm repeating it. You'd rather look and say, you know what, my darling, for years on end, mashallah, I had beautiful toast. Today, I'm trying something new. I only used to know about smoked salmon. Now I know about smoked toast as well. It's a weed. Subhanallah, everyone makes mistakes. You do too. But think about a way of expressing that while you appreciate the time and the effort put in, you will also overlook the mistake that happened. That's what it is. It happens to all of us. Time and effort we put into something and sometimes the end result is not as we wanted it. Did they plan it? No, they didn't. So we don't. We become miserly. We don't want to spend in the right direction. Wallahi, there are men from amongst us who gamble. They throw their money where it's not even supposed to go. And their spouses are there. And guess what? They keep on telling them, hey, you're demanding. You're de but what am I doing? These are your children. This is your house. You are the one who asks for the food. I know of a wealthy man. Wallahi, again, not in Nigeria. You know, I have to clear my, my, myself. I know a wealthy man, he asks his wife, he's wealthy. When I say wealthy, he is a millionaire. He asks his wife for receipts of the groceries that she buys every day. Wallahi alameen. May Allah forgive us. 
He asked his wife for receipts. I want to know what happened. The, 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 the issue came to me. Hey, this man is wealthy and look at what he does. You filled petrol, where's the receipt? I want to see. Come on, that's your spouse. Take your money and shove it into your mouth, man. Eat it, go, digest it, do what you want. Get out. Some people get fed up, they're angry. What's all this money all about? Why? Spend it. And the best place you can spend it is, the hadith says, to put a morsel of food in the mouth of your spouse and children is an act of worship. Did you know that? Even literally, to take it in your hand and put it in the mouth of your spouse is a sadaqah. It is an act of charity. It is an act of worship. Today, go home, my beloved men who are here, and go to your spouse, not your girlfriend. <laughs> spouse, remember what I'm saying. Take the food in your hand and put it into the mouth. Not a fork, you might just poke her. Take it in your hand and lovingly put it in. See what it does to your relationship. See what it does to your relationship. Instantly, there will be a change. Instant. Some of us are so, so horrible at home, your wife might think you're shoving poison into my mouth. What's going on here, you know? Change that. Go out of your way to say things that help people, make them feel worthwhile. Our children, one is dark in complexion, one is fair. We only talk to the one who's fair. Wallahi, I have emails sent to me by children. I cry, Wallahi Azim, when I hear the child saying, because I'm dark in complexion, I'm not allowed to go shopping with my mom. Qasaman. I couldn't believe it. That's your child. No matter what, even if they are challenged or disabled, you must be proud of your child. I love you, my child. You are my love. I love you. Allah gave you to me as a door to enter Jannah. That's what it is. Never discriminate. Some of us have no time for children. I decided recently, you know, my phone, mashallah, I receive messages every few seconds. Every few seconds. And I have two or three different categories of messages. It's categorized. I can pick up some very quickly and some, they, they are just numbers because I don't save a number unless I actually have a relationship with you. And I know who you are personally. Subhanallah, all oh, there is a matter I'm dealing with. So you get a lot of messages. You don't even know who they are. And that's one of the worst things. When someone messages you a question, introduce yourself. Come on. You don't want to introduce yourself. Don't expect a response. For all I care, you could be anyone and, and, and someone with evil intention as well. And I don't need to. It's not my duty to respond to the whole world. You can seek from many other ulama. I know I have 100 emails. I'll reply a day and that's it. More than that, I can't. And that's a figure that's been pushed up from 10 to 20 to 50 to 100. It's a lot. It takes up a lot of time. But recently I decided when I am going to eat. Now why I'm saying this, it's to develop the family and the marriage. When I'm going to eat, my phone will stay in the room or in the lounge. I do not take it with me on the table, no matter what. That's recently I decided. Why? I realized that as a busy person as I am, I sit on the table to eat. And you know what happens? By default, I'm just checking my phone, responding. Sometimes my kids are talking to me and I didn't pick it up. And I am busy preaching to the rest of the world to say, watch out. And I said, no ways. I need to practice what I preach. Put this away. Put it away and now i've put it away and wallahi it is the best time you can have as a father with your children and your family as a mother allah offers you something grand and great everyone sit down together to eat it will happen at least once a day with everyone and if it's a bonus more than once in our countries we can do it more than once in the first world wow hi it's once a week or twice a week they get an opportunity to do it because morning to evening people are out but you have to do this you must put your phone aside talk to them table manners everything else how was your day what happened through your day you know there are public examinations your child comes up with results they don't need to have been rocket scientists even if they haven't done as well as you thought they would do, tell them, well done. I'm so proud of you because you are the only person whom they will hear that from. Did you hear that? I'm proud of you. They don't need to be first in class because first in class is just one person. Maybe two if there is a tie. 
So that means the parents of the rest of them must be upset? No. Even if your child has failed, how many of us sitting here have failed once or twice in certain things we do in life? When we repeat it, we pass again, second time. Nobody made a big deal out of it. But we as parents today, in today's society, there are predators who are waiting to actually wolf on our children as they grow older to lure them into their traps of drugs and sex and illegitimacy, whatever else it is by showing them a little bit of attention. Why? There is an attention deficit back at home. That's the reason. You want to develop your home, give your undivided attention to your family members. Put your phone aside. I promise you, make a rule. Dad, you start. Mom, don't think I'm not going to come to you. You are equally guilty. May Allah forgive us. Imagine the child is crying for you. The child is crying for you and you're busy on your phone showing people, you know, the selfies. <laughs> What's going on? Life, that's life has become and your child is screaming. If only those people who saw the selfie could hear the sound at the same time, they would wonder where you were. You sound like you're in a war zone, the way your children, you don't, you're not worried about anything. My brothers and sisters learn to appreciate one another. I said, appreciating your wife once she becomes a mother, understanding that those are your children. She bore them for you. So naturally her body will change. That doesn't mean my beloved mothers that you can just let yourself go and just blame it on motherhood. No, take pride in yourselves, in your health. There is a lot of pressure on the men out there. Take pride in yourself, your health. Make sure that you exercise. When I say exercise, I mean you burn whatever you may have in terms of excess by whether it's on the treadmill or any other healthy way of doing things. Make sure you make an effort in that regard as well. So when I say the men should appreciate their women, I'm not saying that the women should now just forget about it and say, you see, you're supposed to appreciate me and I'm not appreciated, but you're wasting yourself. Don't waste yourself. Some people are naturally big, mashallah. Some people are naturally small, mashallah. You need to understand this. But at the same time, don't allow yourself to become unhealthy. That's the word. Unhealthy. It's got to do with healthy and unhealthy. Subhanallah. But guess what? The last time I spoke about this, some of the women reprimanded me. They said, why don't you tell the men? Some of them waste themselves. Look at the stomach. It sticks as there. When I was pregnant nine months, my husband looked like he was 18 months. <laughs> Subhanallah. It needs you to do a, a few sit-ups, a few push-ups, and so on and so forth. Mashallah. I hope you're not looking at my belly. Let me stand this way here. <laughs> no, mashallah. We take, we take interest in what we look like. We have to because we have spouses. The difficulty is a lot of men are guilty of taking pride in what they look like for other reasons other reasons so it's either because of your work or it's because of someone you want to impress whom you're not even supposed to be impressing for what what's the purpose every time i look at my hair you know i'm bald so i look at my head and my mother looks at me you know what she tells me you're already married what's the point of taking so much pride in all of this what you worried about your head for and i look at her and i said mom there's still some spaces you know she says, you men, you're all the same. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. That was just a joke, by the way. That was just a joke, by the way. So we need to realize, my, my brothers and sisters, one of the greatest foundations, and I know my time is almost up, 56 minutes uh, already, but it's healthy, inshallah. Five more minutes, alhamdulillah, that's good. I want to end off by saying a few things. Brothers and sisters, one of the most important issues is communication. You need to speak to each other. You need to relate to each other. And in order to encourage communication, you need to know how to react to something you've been told by a spouse, a family member, a child, etc. You need to know. You say communication, your child comes to you and says, you know, I made a mistake. I actually did something terrible. And they tell you something terrible, terrible. Can I say one of the worst things that happens? 
A daughter comes to you, may Allah protect all our children. I mean, say I mean loudly, may Allah protect our children. And a child comes to you 14, 15 years old and says, Mom, I don't know who to turn to. I'm pregnant. They don't come to you because you don't encourage promotion of communication. If they say, I broke the glass, Qiyama already starts. Because your own trumpet was blown rather than Israfil blowing the trumpet. So for them, Qiyama came. The glass broke and ah, that's the trumpet. They got to run. It's the end of the world. Glass broke. Take it easy. Don't worry. Did you get hurt? No, I didn't. Well, then the glass will buy another one tomorrow. It's fine. No, I remember one case where the child was beaten up because one glass broke. You know why? It was one of a set of six. And now they, they didn't, they were too embarrassed to put five glasses looking one way and the sixth one must look different. What's the big deal? Put the sixth one and if I were you, I would tell the guests, I'm so proud of having one different one because my child broke one and I happily told him, don't worry, I will use the five and I will show them that you, at least you were not hurt. Why? What's wrong? What's the big deal? You can, you can start a trend. People will learn things. So when people, when the children communicate or the spouse communicates, you need to react correctly to encourage them to understand that you are the closest person to them. When they have a problem, they must come to you firstly, no one else. And when will they come to you firstly? When you've reacted correctly to them. Do you tell your daughters, your sons, even those who are older, I love you, etc. I have children who are old, mashallah. I have six daughters by the will of Allah and two sons. And my daughters are old in their 20s. And I write to them, I love you. I miss you. And I send them little kisses and faces. I'm sure if you saw that, you might think, hey, is this a father or is he a boyfriend? There is a distinct relationship. And I know that I make sure that these words come out of my mouth for them. They must know it. And I love you. And if there's anything, talk to me. And they have, mashallah. They have. And imagine if a child comes to you, going back to what we just said, and tells you, I'm pregnant. What do you do? You know what? Okay, I was going to say something about my son, but let's, let's leave that, okay? He might not, it was the way he damaged a vehicle and what happened, one of those things. But I reacted in a beautiful way. I won't talk about it because he won't like it, okay? But imagine when, when someone does something, you say, look, you know what, you've made a mistake. I'm definitely hurt and I'm saddened, but I love you so much. I'm going to help you through this. That's how you talk. That's how you build a relationship. Because someone else will tell them, don't worry, I'll help you do this, I'll help you do that. They become closer to a devil outside the home because you didn't know how to react. So this is something important, communication. Communication is absolutely important. These are topics on their own. Maybe the next peace and unity convention we have, we will break down each one of these things and we'll expand on them because wallahi, it's important. I spoke earlier about independence. You know what that means? When your children are married, let them do their thing. Let them to a great degree make decisions as well. I know homes where father makes a decision for children, even who they will marry. And secondly, he makes decisions for the grandchildren as well. Why? That's how it works. It doesn't work like that in Islam, let alone in anything else. So the modern world blames us for being people who are hardline, extreme and so on, oppressive. But it's not Islam. It's the way we've been doing things. No, you don't make decisions for your whole family all the time. Give them the freedom of making their decisions at times. You need to know. And this is why when it comes to marriage, one of the most important things is for us to understand that the choice belongs to them who are getting married. We will guide them. If they're making a ridiculous mistake, we will, we will tell them, we will be firm with them. But if it's something Allah has allowed, who am I to disallow it? If it is something Allah has allowed, who am I to disallow it? I will not have an answer on the day of judgment when Allah asks me, why did you block something that I unblocked? Are you competing with me? Go back to the teachings of Allah and his Rasul and check what you are supposed to be doing and do it. My beloved brothers and sisters, responsibility is key as well. Many of us are irresponsible. 
Very irresponsible in so many different ways. It's a word, but it comes with a lot of difficulty. It's not easy to be responsible. You need to control yourself. You need to lower your gaze. When the hadith speaks about lowering your gaze, yes, it is something grand and great. I remember a man, the wife comes and she says, you know, my husband, he cannot control his eyes. Every time he sees a woman, he has to turn around to look at her behind. And I'm like, what's going on? And I kept on reading and guess what it says? And a lot of those behinds are fake. It took me a while to understand what she said there. And then she went on to say, Sheikh, I don't know if you're aware that you can actually purchase a behind and wear it. <laughs> what? And the poor man is admiring some silicone that's there. May Allah forgive us. A'udhu Billah. In both ways, he's wrong. Lower your gaze. You develop your relationship for the sake of Allah. Lower your gaze for the sake of Allah and look at how your family will blossom. Your relationship with your spouse will blossom and bloom. You cannot have all the roses in the garden. You took your pick and that's it, mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us. I wish, and I, I wish that I had more time, but inshallah there will always be another time if Allah wills and if not me, someone else. I hope that the few words I've said have motivated myself, inshallah, made me more conscious of my own relationships with my family members and made me more conscious of my own marriage. And at the same time, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all to also change in one way or another. Remember what I said about the morsel, inshallah, today. Do you remember what I said about the morsel, my brothers? That was weak. Do you remember what I said about the morsel, my brothers? Subhanallah. I don't know why those who are not married were saying yes, but it's okay, inshallah. May Allah make it easy for you on that day, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the best of spouses. May He make us choose the right spouse, the, those with deen and khuluq, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us entry into Jannah with ease. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah, bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.